G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, it would mean the world if you could hit the subscribe button down below. We're closing in on 75K. Today, we're gonna look back at my ladder predictions and see how my ladder stacked up against the actual ladder. Let's I picked get into the Lions to come first. I didn't want to pick the Ds because I know how hard it is to finish first. Like we did it with the last kick of the season last year. And I just feel like finishing first twice in a row isn't very common. So I had the Ds in second. I had the Lions in the pole position. The Lions in first, <clears throat> that is a bit of a shame. Um, I thought they were gonna have a really big breakout season. They obviously struggled a little bit in elements. I think it was down to their defense is the general consensus. But I still had them in my top eight, so I'm pretty proud about that. I've got the Ds in second. I'm <laughs> what a prediction. The Ds in second, if you don't mind. I tipped the Ds in second because it's almost unheard of for teams to finish on top in back-to-back -to -back seasons. It doesn't happen very often. And a lot of the teams that went back-to-back, -back, like the Hawks and the Tigers, they did it from third, second or third. So um, I had a feeling that the Ds would have a strong year but not be the best team in it in the home and away season. So I'm pretty pumped about that that selection. It's more hopeful than anything. Like, who knows what could happen? I, I just think the D's age demographic is super, super exciting. And it gives us every chance to do similar things to what we did last year. But I'm just aware that you can't take anything for granted. And in football... Well said, McDonald. A good win one week. It means nothing the next. So I'm well aware that it's not a foregone conclusion and it's something that they're gonna have to play a better brand than they did last year to do what they did last year. That's really well spoken. This man knows his shit. <laughs> I'm actually impressed. That was really well said. Dogs in third, wow. When it's on their terms. Like when the Bulldogs are playing their champagne football, it's very, very hard to stop. But when the doggies are sort of on the back foot a little bit, uh, we saw in a couple of games last year that when the going gets tough, uh, they can sometimes fold. So essentially what I was saying was when the dogs are on and they're playing their best footy and it's on their terms, they can take the piss out of footy teams. Um, and when teams don't allow them to play their sort of style, which sort of speaks for any game ever, um, they can crumble a little bit. They don't really have a plan B. I felt like they were exploited in a lot of games this season. Um, I know that they've had injuries and it's hard to back up after a season. Uh, when you play in the grand final, you get less of a preseason, um, less time for injuries to recover and whatnot. So it is hard to back up year in, year out their form this year. And to be honest, they probably didn't deserve to make the eight in the end. But I had them in the four, so I'm going to give that a tick for having them in the eight. Joshy Bruce is a huge loss, similar to Eric Hipwood. And then Sam Darcy is now out for the start of the season. So it might be Jamara Hagen o'clock. What a shout! <laughs> Jamara Hagen time. I called it, and the man had a pretty impressive breakout back end of the season. The power will finish in the top four. Well, that's a shocking decision. They had a real sort of catch-up year. They dropped that first sort of six, seven games, which means your season's over. They had a really good sort of season after the first six rounds, but you're just playing catch-up, and you're not really going to make an impact in the season. Kane Corns tips the power to bounce back pretty quickly. Um, I'm not completely sold on that. I think it's a very big year for Ken Hinckley next year. It's sort of now or never, but to come from 11th and jump all the way up into the top four, I just don't see it happening. So um, big year for the Saints and the power next year, I reckon. They're sort of both in that same sort of bracket. I think it was a little bit silly for me to put the Swans in. I sort of thought they could <laughs> nudge their way up to a top four spot, but looking at how young some of their team is. I think that's probably a little bit of a stretch. So someone messaged me and said that um, the Swans the year before sort of overachieved and it's going to be one of those seasons where they stagnate a little bit. And I just bought into it. I was like, yeah, great shout. Um, they do have such a young list. So I, I, I think I tipped the Swans to be fourth in my season predictions, but I moved them down to almost out of the eight, if not out of the eight. So um, silly decision because John Longmire and the Bloods culture know how to create... Uh, a winning football organisation. They've been up in finals for years and it was a little bit silly for me to uh, count them out. On Cats, any time I've ever written that football side off, they've just made grand finals and <laughs> nearly won grand finals. So <laughs> I physically can't do it. I can't write them off 
until it's round 23 and they're physically not in finals. Well, we, the Cats, I just have to take my hat off at this point to that organisation. What they've done is incredible. It's not even sustained success anymore. This is just their culture. They don't drop out of the top four. They are an amazing football team and an amazing football club. Um, Dil Danoon in my preseason predictions, which I think we'll probably try and react to at some point, um, he tipped the Cats for first on the ladder. And I laughed at him. I said... They were 80 points. They were not. They were 90 points off the Ds um, in a prelim final. That is the gap between the Premiers and everyone else. And I don't see how they've made that up in the offseason. Um, they brought in Stengel. They brought in Cameron like the year before. And obviously they had a lot of players on their list that hadn't sort of reached their peak. And they've now started to gel as a team and... They've improved. They've improved without sort of trading or drafting or anything. They've just improved their own list. It's incredible. Hats off to them. Um, and I don't think I'm going to tip them outside the top four for the rest of my life. They are just uh, an impressive an impressive side. So for me, I'm going to have to put them in and around the top four. I don't think they're good enough for the top four. Even, even <laughs> last year, they almost finished first. When the final siren went at the end of round 23... The Cats were the minor premiers. Unbelievable. But even when that happened, I'm still sort of going, oh, well, I don't know. There's something <laughs> missing for me with the Cats. And maybe they'll come out and prove us all wrong, but I see them sliding slightly. In sixth, I said it in the season predictions, and I'm going to back it in here. I reckon Carlton will hop up into the top eight, and I reckon they'll finish sixth. Oh, everyone was rinsing me for that call. I put Carlton into the top Eight, I said the Blues will host a home final. Everyone was rinsing me. You know nothing about football. You know nothing. You know nothing. The, the Blues are crap. And I was like, mate, they are poised to take the next step. And they did for 22 rounds and 119 minutes. <laughs> they were in the top eight all season. They were in the top four all season. For 22 rounds and 119 minutes of football, I was correct, and you were all wrong, and then they lost, and now my prediction doesn't look that that smart, does it? So I'm a little bit disappointed that um, they let me down, but, geez, I was so proud of my call all season. It all comes down to me if they glue together as a team. I started thinking about your Adam Cheras and your George Hewitts and your Sards and your Zachy Williams all being introduced in the last couple of years. That is great talent. And that creates great depth. So I started thinking about the depth of the footy club and it really excited me. And the more I thought about the mm. depth and their maturity, I was thinking maybe it is time for the Blues to go that next level. Well, the depth was tested throughout the season and the depth pulled through. I think that's something that was correct was, um, you know, no matter all the injuries that Carlton had to endure throughout the season, they covered them pretty well and they held on as long as they could. They sort of kept winning games with half their list out. Uh, they kept fronting up, kept showing up, and it caught up to them in the end of the season. But it, their depth was something to be praised. I've gone in seventh place. I've gone the Tigers. And I think it was just out of the respect. Yeah, the that's another one I got correct. Ago. That's another one I got correct. I had a feeling the Tigers would hop back up into the top eight. I think in some preseason prediction podcast that I've done, I tipped... Melbourne and Richmond to play off in a grand final. So that's still a live chance. Um, I just thought it would be cool, the old dynasty versus the hopefully new dynasty, and to see if the old the old kings could knock off the new prince. Um, I don't even know my royal term, so I hope that worked out. But, yeah, I tipped the Tigers for seventh. Um, and, yeah, no surprise that they, they made it into the eighth that I put them in seven. So so the Swannies, I predicted for them to not make the top four, but I've got them in eighth. I think they will slide in, but golly, golly, gosh, Saints, Essendon, GWS, Freo. I, I almost couldn't pick between those five teams to finish eighth. Like, Jeez, I think I had like <clears throat> from eighth to 12th pretty well as well. I, I know the Giants and the Bombers slipped down a little bit further, um, but majority of the teams I was naming there were thereabouts. The only two teams that I had in there that didn't make it were Western Bulldogs and the Power. 
I think next year I'm just going to fully go for it. So when I do my predictions, I usually base it off the last season quite heavily. I think next year I'm going to throw some curveballs into my top four. So as you saw, like the pair and the Bulldogs who made, who I predicted to make the top four and who almost or were thereabouts last year, they didn't even make the eight. So there can be, there can be drastic changes to the top eight. And I think next year, for my predictions, I'm going to give it a real launch. So I also did predicting the bottom eight ladder. Um, I thought the top eight sounded so good in a title, so I thought the bottom eight would sound good as well. And that's obviously only 16 teams. And I don't know why I do that. I don't know why I name titles incorrectly on purpose to try and help the algorithm. It makes me look like an idiot. Being Essendon, I think they're going to have a similar year to what St Kilda had last year. So St Kilda in 2020 made finals and then missed out in 2021. It wasn't a huge back step, but they plateaued for a season. I think that could probably happen to the Bombers this year. They made finals last year. I don't see them having a huge back step. I don't think they're going to slide massively, but I think they might plateau. And <laughs> I know they made eighth position. So I think going from eighth to ninth isn't like a drastic slide backwards could have a slide backwards mcdonald said they fell to 15th the bombers fell to 15th um i think i was being very generous there by putting them in ninth i think i was fearful of the acid and faithful coming for me again they fell for to 15th um that's a shocking shocking result for this so the bombers are in ninth for mine this is when it gets really, really tricky. I've got the Saints in 10th. They have been... I tip the Saints correct. The Saints finished 10th. What do I say about them? around that sort of 8th to 12th position <coughs> for about six years now. So it's sort of hurting my brain that the Saints are still not quite there. But that's how cutthroat the season's going to be. Once again, the Dockers have shown a little bit in the last couple of years. And we're just waiting for the proof of their improvement. Uh, it hasn't quite happened just yet, but... It wouldn't surprise me if the Dockers have one of those years where they hop up. There we go. So I sort of half predicted that there will be a side that bobs up, and it was Frio. Um, and I should have probably gone with it. It makes so much sense now in hindsight. Yeah, the Dockers hopped up into the eight, but I tipped them for 12th. This is the year before they really make the jump. I think they're going to take some scalps <laughs> this year, similar to last year. I think this will be the last year of the Gold Coast Suns being horrendous. I think that's a great shout. I reckon the Suns are now going to be like a Carlton of next year. They are going to be close to making the eight, which is going to be so exciting. Um, yeah, I think this is the last year that the Suns are sort of maligned and, and terrible. I think from now on, finals is the expectation, so which is so exciting. The next team I've got is Hawthorne. I think they're probably the better team out of that bottom three or four of the last couple of years. Uh, the scalps that they pulled off last year was very, very impressive. Um, you know, they drew with the D's, they knocked off the Lions, they knocked off the Bulldogs, uh, showed some showed some skill and prowess, the Hawkers. So I've got them in 14th position. I love their forwards. Cozzy and Mitch Lewis will be some of the best key forwards in the next like 10 years. Mitch Lewis had a year and a half, didn't he? Uh, Mitch Lewis is one of my favorite key forwards to watch. I love a forward that's tall, and I know that sounds silly, but um, when you've got like a 190 centimetre forward, um, I find that frustrating. So I like I like my big key forwards to be 200 plus. Um, and his hands and he's just, the way he can knock over the defenders and um, a little bit intimidating as well. I love Mitch Lewis. Like, one of the best duos going around in the league. West Coast, 15. I think they have a slide <laughs> similar to what... Collingwood had last year where they were sort of a top eight team to being not nowhere near it. I know they didn't make the eight last year, but there is that sort of half thought in your head. Can the Eagles go one more? I think if they go they one can't. more, it's only a matter of time before they drop off the face of the earth. North Melbourne, 16th. I love the ruse. I love the young ruse. And I don't really think many teams win the wooden spoon twice in a row. So I'm expecting the ruse to improve... Poor North. Poor North. I fear for them. Um, I thought, I don't know, in 2020, they were okay. So I was surprised that they kept getting worse over the last few years. And um, yeah, I didn't expect them to win the, the spoon two years in a row. A little bit disappointed about that. A little bit. Adelaide, I think, are going to plateau again. Yeah, it's just um, very, Adelaide very did all right. young, inexperienced. Their back line is very inexperienced. Their midfield's very inexperienced. They're just so inexperienced. Um, I like their top-end talent. Riley Tilthorpe 
is an absolute star in the making. I just don't think they're going to really damage many sides this year and it is what it is. Sorry, Crowies fans. It is what it is. And last but not least, I've got the pie. So I picked them last in my preseason predictions. That sits quite comfortably with me. I, I sort of look at the turnover. I look at the talent they've lost in the last few years. It took a toll last year. I don't see a Sydney Swans type jump back into the eight. But if there was ever a team to do it, I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me the Collingwood organisation to be able to rally off the back of a bad year. <coughs> I've tipped the Collingwood Football Club to finish last. That is that is so funny. That What they've done is unheard of. You, you can't go from second last to the top four. It is unprecedented stuff. Um, oh, it's incredible. It is incredible. And, yeah, I sort of saved myself at the end there because the Collingwood organisation makes grand finals every year. 10 years since I've been alive like they they are not far away from contending and it's consistent and they don't always stay in the top eight forever sort of like the swans and and the cats they do sort of go through a little bit of a cycle where they come up and down but they're always yeah four five six years off being in grand finals and prelims so I had that in my kit bag when I was saying that I was like well they finished what second last last year you look at all the lists you look at what everyone's sort of drafted and traded in, they probably are going to finish last again. Like it just makes sense for them to finish last before they make the climb back up. But before I finished on that, I was sort of like, well, this is a very well-ran organisation. The Collingwood Football Club is ran as well as Geelong and and Sydney on and off field. Um, And I thought maybe that sort of of organisation could stop the rot anyway guys that is me reflecting on my top eight predictions um if you want to watch those videos i'll put the link in the description down below Uh, i appreciate the support i appreciate everyone tuning in and i'll see you all for some more content very very soon thanks guys